Welcome to the UN Owen Show. I am your host, UN Owen. Today I'm interviewing the cast and from the book, And Then There Were None, by Dame Agatha Christie. Before we get started, I would like you to I would like to let you know that we do have the honor of having the the author with us today in our audience. How are you doing today, Miss Christie? You look very good for being just a few months shy of 120 years old. Excuse me, I'm only 38, but anyway, I'm doing fine. I would also like to call your attention to another fam famous audience member. It looks like Gabriel, Gabriel <coughs> Torrell is with us today. How are you? How is it that you are connected with the cast of this best-selling book? I'm doing very well, thank you. I was the one who bought Soldier Island. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming today, everybody. Let's meet our panel. Could each of you explain who you are and why is it that you decided to originally come to Soldier Island? Let's start with Mr. Marston. Good evening. My name is Anthony Marston. I came to Soldier Island to have fun and maybe get some drinks or two for free. Next, let's meet our lovely married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers. Well, we, we came to uh, Soldier Island because we received a letter from the Regina Agency requesting us to come here and work for a few days. And I need to tell you, we were accused of killing Jennifer Brady, but let me set things straight. We did not. She died of old age and there's nothing more to it. <laughs> would you like some tea? I'm, I'm fine, Mr. Rogers, but thank you. Kill me, I tell you. Marston, you killed us. We were two innocent children. You Why? forgot to mention that. You should not have been standing in the middle of the road. We were you lost. are drunk. You didn't even honk. I didn't see you. Let's move on to General MacArthur. Thank you for coming today. I heard you had a splitting headache before the show. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Yeah? You have a note with us? Oh, okay. Doctor's note. <coughs> Sir General MacArthur has been diagnosed with a severe, severe head injury and jaw dislocation. So he is not able to speak like his normal self. Oh. Okay. He sent me to the war just so he could get a girl. Cause he can't get one on his looks. <laughs> I think it is time for our first commercial break. Jeez! Don't you always feel safe under blankets? I mean, what do they actually do though? When you're scared, blankets always help. Well, now they can actually save your life. Watch as this little girl very maturely eating her cheese senses the presence of something very, very scary. Ah! I'm gonna kill! No! She's under an invincible blanket. As you can see, it works perfectly. This blanket is very high tech as it senses an evil presence and emits a spray. You may recognize it from our earlier product, Murder Away, as seen on TV. Well, well, you can see this product obviously works. So, so go buy it. You don't want to get murdered, do you? All right, we're back, and I'd like to continue to have our audience be in our panel. I believe we left off with Miss Emily Brent. Good evening. You know, this is a very peculiar matter of business indeed. You see, I was invited to Soldier Island or Indian Island, whichever you prefer, by either a Miss Odin or a Mrs. Oliver. I never could really figure out which, as the signature was quite illegible. Well, she invited me to the summer resort as a free getaway. However, I should have realized that it was only a trap and, well, Otherwise, I might have kept on living my beautiful life, and I might have actually finished knitting my scarf. <laughs> Just a quick question. Do you always sit up so straight? Do I always sit up so straight? You know, there was once a day when I was growing up that my posture would be considered slouching. 
Mr. Wargrave, what is that on your forehead? <laughs> Mr. Wargrave, do you need a Kleenex? I believe an audience may, member may be here to help. Is there a Constance Calmington in the audience? Yes, I am here. Oh, Justice, let me wipe your pretty little forehead. We have so much to catch up on. <laughs> well, Constance, I'm glad you could make it. But maybe you could get together and have some caribou, caribou coffee offset. By the way, Emily, you are such a cruel animal. You drove me to my death. It was only your actions. You killed me and you know it. You didn't have any sympathy. You just sent me there. You deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr. Armstrong, you were the one person that was hard to find in the end. Tell us your role in this story and what happened to you. Well, I was invited to Soldier Island by uh, Mr. Owen to help attend his wife, who he thought was sick. Um, I ended up uh, dying by drowning. Mr. Warder shoved me off the cliff. Thanks a lot for that. And then later I was found, and um, I was tricked into helping Warder. Um, he told me that he had to fake his death so he could sneak around the house and find out who the real murderer was, and I fell for it. And uh, um, I was, uh, I accidentally killed uh, Lucia Mary Cleese. Um, I was operating on her and I had an under the influence and made an accident for two. Dr. Armstrong, you were purposely killed me and I know it, you were not drunk. I believe it is time for our second commercial break. Such a big house for such a little price. $55 million house in New York. Beautiful property. Brand new one um, with its own gardening crew. This $80 million house in California. You can, it even comes with its own security system. $200 million Mediterranean Sea. It's a beautiful mansion. It's giant with such a low price for such a big house. And there's two hundred and seventy-five million dollar soldier island. Look how big of an island that is for such a low, low price. Hi, I'm Isaac Morris. And I'm Justice Ward. And we were able to afford the wonderful soldier island with MR Real Estate. With their investment. The cast of And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Excuse me, that's Dame Agatha Christie, if you please. It was one of the highest honors of my life. I had to write a lot of best-selling books to get that title. Oh, I'm so very sorry, Dame Agatha Christie. I did not mean any disrespect to you. I am a huge fan of yours. I'd like to continue meeting our panel. Mr. Bloor, you seem to be a little spooked by the ticking of our clock today. Well, a, a little bit. It's a nice clock, but Clocks kind of scare me after the incidents on the island. Speaking of the island, I was invited there as Miss Owen's private detective. I had no idea I was going to get clocked. Her valuables and the other guests were what I was supposed to be watching at the time. Then, you know, TikTok. You sent me to my death. You deserve to die. Oh wait, it's too bad you got crushed. You're not capable of moving out of the way, you old man. Okay, Mr. Lombard, you are next. I hope you know we have a no weapons policy. Well, I only brought the revolver for my own safety and because Isaac Morris sent me to carry out a mission, and that mission was to watch everyone. He paid me 100 yenis. I, I walked right into his trap. What is that I see? A sign in the audience? What does it say? Could you tell me why you brought this to our show today? I did nothing of the sort. You guys have a different attitude on dying, and you know it. Most Englishmen would prefer to live, and I would prefer to live. So you can die. I believe it is time for our third commercial break.
right, right before your eyes, one by one. Oh my gosh, another one, Dad. Is this some type of mystery book or something? Sooner or later, we're all going to die. I have the perfect solution! The Jingle Clip! They clip on the bell to your enemy, and then you pay them from miles away. Order within the next minute, and you'll receive 10 for just $9.99. from our last person on the panel. Let's hear from the girl who thinks seaweed is creepy. I, um, I came to Soldiers Island from, I received a letter from Una Nancy Olin telling me to go to Soldiers Island to take a summer job out on the island to be a secretary. And the voice that on the gramophone, which by the way was totally lying, accused me of murdering Cyril Hamilton. He was just a dumb old little boy who decided to take a chance and swim out to the um, rock. I was a good teacher and I... You drowned a kid. How could you do that? You're a teacher. You I did I nothing of that. Yes, you did. You know I couldn't swim out to the rock, but you still let me anyways, and you didn't even try to save me when I was drowning. I'm very sorry, but that was your own dumb mistake. I do have a question for you, Vera. Why of all did you trust the Lombard? I gave the Christie described him as being panther-like in the book. Uh, excuse me, that's Dame Agatha Christie, if you please do. Oh, excuse me, that is Dame Agatha Christie. Oh, once again, my apologies. I am a really huge fan of yours. Um, I, just, I trusted Lombard because he seemed very loyal, but um, that he turned up. It is time for our fourth and final commercial break. Hi, I'm Rob Lowe, and I am Greg Lowe. And I'm super shy, Rob Lowe, and I have an iPod. With a gramophone, you can reveal everyone's secrets. My iPod's getting delivered today, and that's not a girl. Or a guy! Gramophone, <laughs> <laughs> you can be an evil mastermind, like me. We're back. At this time, I'd like to talk to a few members from our studio audience. Let me introduce you to Fred Naricott and Jim, the taxi driver. They, they're the men responsible for bringing each of the members out to Soldier Island. Tell us more. Did you know what you were doing? Why was it that, after dropping everyone off, why did you never come back? It was you, Mr. Owen, who recommended I not come back to the island before the weekend was over. All I did was do it for, so, so I could get paid. As you can see, we also have some very distinguished people with us from Squat Scotland Yard. Can you tell us some things you saw when you got to the island and, and why none of it seemed to make any sense? Well, there were some people dead on the rocks. There was a lady hung in a room, which made no sense, though, because the chair was pushed back over into the wall. We found one person dead on the shore by a bullet. We thought he killed himself, but the gun was at the top of the staircase. And that's basically all we have. That's you. I'd also like to let you know that we have a that we have a member of the Emma Jane fishing trawler. This is the crew who found the message in the bottle from Justice Wargrave. What exactly did the message in the bottle say? I notice now that it's in the hands of the Scotland Yard police. All right. Well, first off, well, first off, I'm gonna start off saying that I have the bottle right here, so it's not in my hands. And also, the message in the bottle it said something about. A Justice Wargrave that had a passion for murder and he wanted to commit a really big one. So he sent messages out to everyone that he thought was guilty and he led them out there and killed them off one by one. Justice Wargrave, why would you do this? Did you have any good reasons? 
as a boy, I liked murdering things. I wanted to suffer and I was going to die soon. So and I wanted to create the unsolvable murder. So yeah, that's why I did it. And they all deserved it. Very foolish. Well, thank you. I think your plan fooled us all. It certainly seemed to be unsolvable. Next time, you want to put a message in a bottle, though. Maybe send a message to Constance. That, this goes better with the romantic imagination you mentioned in your confession, and no one get, would get hurt. In closing, I would like to thank our guest author, Dame Agatha Christie, and all of the members of the book, and then there were none, <coughs> for being with us today. I hope you've enjoyed our show. Join us next week for our episode titled, Dames and Divas. So, I just killed every one of them, but in this and then right I killed here. myself. Yeah, that's pretty much it. They're all dead now. So I also have a question for you. Why would you kill yourself? Because I wanted to go out with a blaze of fire. Vera, <laughs> did you know that Hugo, I mean, that, that, that Cyril could not swim out to the rock? Well, was it Justice Wargrave? Miss, um, oh, you went away? So that's my house and every two of you? Absolutely awesome question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mrs. Rogers, I have no idea. <laughs> Any more? Emily Brent, why are you so rotten? Ooh. <laughs> oh my God. I, young lady, I'm not rotten, as you would say. I have done nothing. As a matter of fact, with which to reproach myself. And that is all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> I'd like to ask the Rogerses, what was the worst job you've ever had? Oh, the food truck. She's so right. <laughs> so, there was this food truck. It was nasty. <laughs> Justice Warger, why couldn't you have like had him be the person who helped you? Why did it have to be me? Because he's a doctor. Well, because he and you had a friendship. <laughs> <laughs> and you trusted me. And I backstabbed you. <laughs> Once again, you deserved it. That makes sense. <laughs> Just so you know, the invincible I get is only two million. So if you really need it, you can buy it. How did you meet? <laughs> it was that other food truck that we had. <laughs> I actually had a comment for the um, Murder Away company. You see, I won't take you up on your offer, but I'm kind of, I've kind of already been murdered, so it's a little late. <laughs> I'm Cole Short, and I played the part of UN Owen. I'm Macy Wolf, and I was UN Owen's understudy. I'm Noah Headland, and I played the Scotland Yard. I'm Brock Hager, and I also played the Scotland Yard. I'm Nathan Hilton, and I played part of the fishing trawler. I'm J2 Cooper, and I also played part of the fishing trawler. I'm Cortland Whitman, and I played Cyril. I'm Hunter Stanger, and I played Anthony Marston. And my understudy, Ethan Hendricks, is not here. I'm Mia Bannock, and I was the understudy for Mr. Rogers. I'm Dina Theros, and I was the understudy for Mrs. Rogers. I'm Rhoda Capesel, and I was Mrs. Rogers. I'm Tyler Sampson, and I was the <coughs> actor for Mr. Rogers. I'm Emerson Brooks, and I play Jennifer Brady. I'm Richard Lynn, and I play Arthur Richmond. I'm John Humphreys, and I play General MacArthur. 
I'm Heather Bruley, and I played the understudy for General MacArthur. I am Miss Emily Brent, and my name in real life is Lindsay Walker. I'm Nicole Worm, and I was Emily Brent's understudy. I'm Kelsey Waters, and I was Beatrice Taylor. I'm Jacob Suter, and I was uh, Wargrave, and my understudy Michael is in here. I am Tanner Zwicky, and I was Dr. Armstrong. I'm Eli Schaefer, and I played the doctor's understudy. I'm Sullivan Patterson. I played uh, Mr. Bloor. I'm Ian Romine, and I was Mr. Bloor's understudy. I'm Riley Vanier, and I was James Stephen Landor. I'm Nick McNaughton, and I was in Commercial 4. I'm Jackson May, and I was in Commercial 4. I'm Colin Soderholm, and I played Philip Lombard. I'm Riley Guy and Helgen, and I played Lombard's understudy. I'm Ethan Zena, and I played the one of the 21 African people who died. Lombard killed. I'm Mason Wolfman, and I played one of the 21 African people that died. I'm John Damer, and I was in Commercial 2. I'm Jacob Keller, and I was in Commercial 2. I'm Ryan Monahan, and I was in Commercial 2. I'm Mason Creaky, and I was in Commercial 2. I'm Cindy Lemke, and I was um, Vera Claythorne. I'm Jenna Nelson, and I was Vera Claythorne's understudy. I'm Ashton Kessie, and I was Louis and Mary Cleese. I'm Callie Christensen, and I was in Commercial 3. I'm Macy Reynolds, and I was in Commercial 3. I'm Sadie Jude, and I was in Commercial 3. I'm Juliana Cummings, and I played Constance Cummington. I'm Marina Brown, and I was Agatha Christie. I'm Abby Franzen, and I was Agatha Christie Understudy. I'm Austin Bulkley, and I was John Combs. I'm Lana Starzak, and I was Lucy Combs. I'm Sarah McCullough, and I was Edward Seaton. I'm Austin Hegman, and I was Fred Narcott. I'm Anthony Winterman, and I was Jim the Taxi Driver. I'm Brian Neuliger, and I was Hugo. I'm Abby Stupar, and I was a little girl in Commercial One. I'm Autumn Wilson, and I was the announcer in Commercial One. I'm Tori Brent, and I was the murderer in Commercial One. I'm the Invincible Blanket. I'm Sydney Fee, and I play Gabrielle Turner.